Okay, welcome to module 11 recap. I think we are getting close to the end of the course, so that's good. We only have one more to go. We should see the light at the end of the tunnel. Good. All right, so in module 11, to me, that was a little bit of a fun module um, because it was not very dense with the mathematics. It was more practical. It was much more applied. And the title is Viscous Flow, which is much more realistic as opposed to inviscid. Flow in pipes. But in addition to looking at the pipes, I also look at different cross sections, especially for here in Florida, we need um, air conditioning related jobs. So you will have access to different geometries as well, different ducts. Okay? All right, the first thing that I did was I introduced you, which you probably know, the laminar flow, transitional, and turbulent. Okay? And we discuss the Reynolds number, which quantifies which regime do I fall in. Okay? Um, this is quite important because many of the stuff that I have done so far was only for laminar okay? in these modules 1 through 10. So now we are getting to the turbulent regime as well. Okay? In addition to that, what I also did was I showed you the entrance region and fully developed region. I said that. Let's say that I have a pipe that is connected to a pump. Right at the beginning, the viscous fluid flow is not happening. Okay? There'll be some length, and we quantify that number as well, both for laminar and turbulent. Um, the flow will not be fully viscous. There will be an inviscid core. So we discuss that. Okay? In addition to that, we looked at a particular uh, graph where we, we looked at the pressure versus the distance. And we showed that at the entrance length, we do have a nonlinear relationship between pressure and distance. While this is in the fluid developed, it is a linear relationship. You may not realize that this is a big deal, but that's a huge deal. Because then that del del P del X, if I'm traveling in the X direction, will be equal to a constant number, right? When you take integrals, you will see that, in, I mean, as you already know, taking an integral of a constant is much more preferable than a function. Then I started with the fully developed laminar flow. What I did was, I actually did two approaches. In the first approach, I looked at the um, non-dimensional analysis. I did a pi terminology, Buckingham pi from module 10, so it's fresh. We did all this analysis, and we come up with a formulation that relates my properties and parameters to the flow rate, the velocity, okay? And we have a constant number um, that we discussed that, hey, if this is C is equal to 32, this is for pipes, and I discussed different shapes for you as well. And then for the laminar, we started looking at this friction factor, that's friction factor, and we showed that, that it is gonna be actually fairly easy. Remember, for turbulent, it's much more complicated. For the laminar, it's much more easy, and it's simply 16 over Reynolds for a circular. Um, so we showed that, okay? We looked at different cross sections, the dots, the concentric cylinder, etc. And then I did a second analysis where I looked at the much more fundamental approach for deriving this pressure, distance, velocity, volumetric flow rate in a pipe, and pretty much I get the same answer as I should, right? So that was giving you a flavor of a different approach. And then I started with the turbulent flow. And when I first started with the turbulent flow, I said that, hey, the turbulent is going to introduce significant complexity to our analysis, which is a fact, okay? And we looked at this Darcy friction factor, and we, we noticed that this Darcy friction factor is fairly complicated now, because it's not only a function of my Reynolds number, but also pipe roughness, equivalent roughness. So that was a big difference. And we come up with a Moody's chart, right, to find the F value, or we sh should we show some other equations that you can use to obtain your F value? Also, what we showed is we modified the Bernoulli's equation, and on the left hand side, I'll put it up there, we put that input power. But remember, what is the unit of that HP that you see up there? Horsepower? What? No, it's length. Careful. And on the right hand side, we introduce a loss term. We call this head loss HL. And we divided this HL into two components. One is the major losses, one, are the, one is the main minor losses. Major losses is mainly from 
basically the viscous flow in pipes in a straight pipe. Okay, I'm not accounting for any components of the piping system. I'm just looking at the, at the one particular pipe and seeing what kind of a loss do I get. You can think of this as the friction in your salt mechanics, right? And I obtained uh, for you for major loss HL major. I'll put it up there. F times L over D times V squared over 2G, and this F value, if it is laminar, again, just to repeat myself, it is 16 over Reynolds. If it is transitional and turbulent, you have to look at the Moody's chart or the equations that we call Colbrook or modified Colbrook equation. So you need to visit that to find your F value. Other than that, there's nothing complicated in this particular approach. And then I did several examples to illustrate how this all comes together. And I obviously neglected the minor losses because I don't teach you that yet, right? But then after that, I started looking at the minor losses. And again, I'll put the equation in here. HL minor will be equal to KL times V square over 2G, right? And this KL value that you see up there will depend on the piping components that I have. 45 by 90 degree band, 45 degree band, valves, the elbows, the T's. So that this information will be supplied to you or you will be able to access this from a table that is given, okay? And then I saw some questions, you know, how everything comes together now. I had the major losses, the minor losses, there's some power, right? Um, and see what happens in my analysis.